to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. We're glad you tuned in on this morning, and we pray that the worship service can be inspirational to you. I hope you enjoy the singing and the preaching, and may God bless you. Teach me your will while you are working, Lord. Help me be still. Though Satan is busy, but God is real. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Bright on my tongue, let your words edify. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Take charge of my thoughts, both day and night. Please order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Father, I pray, order my steps in your word, please. I want to walk, I want to walk worthy, my, 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 my calling. Please order my, order my steps, Lord, and I. Your blessed will the world see the world is ever changing, but you are still the same. Hey, if you order my order my I'm gonna I'm gonna praise you, I'll praise you, I'll praise your name. Order my My calling to fulfill. If you order my steps, Lord, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do your blessed will. See, the world is ever changing, but you are still the same. Oh, if you order my, I'm gonna praise you. I'll praise you, I'll praise your name. I want to walk, want to walk worthy. I want to walk worthy, my, my calling to fall. Please order my, order my steps, Lord. And I'll do, I'll do, I'm going to do your blessed will. The world is ever, the world is ever changing, but you are still the same. But you are still the same. If you order my, you order my steps, Lord, I'm going to praise your name. Order, order my steps in you. Order my tongue in your word, God, in your word, wash my heart, hey, in your word, then show me. 
me, show me, show me, show me, show me how to walk, Jesus. And show me how to talk. Hey, when I, when I need a brand new, when I need a brand new song to sing, show me how to let your your word, in your word, oh, 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 please, order my, order my, order my, just order my steps, Lord, you said the steps of a good man are ordered, ordered in the Lord, please, order my steps in your word, please. Order my steps in your, your word. Man.
pleasant parishioners, if you would join me in a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the season that we are in. We know that you are doing something during this time. God, we pray that we are not oblivious to what you are doing even in this time. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and our Redeemer. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would, go with me uh, to the book of Matthew. Go with me to the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 14th chapter, and we will read uh, verses 1 through 12. 1 through 12. Matthew, the 14th chapter, and we will read verses 1 through 12. I am reading from the New International Version, so brothers and sisters, join me in our reading. The Word of God speaks on this wise. At, th at that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the reports about Jesus, and he said to his attendants, this is John the Baptist. He's risen from the dead. That is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Now Herod heard, now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodotus, uh, his brother Philip's wife. For John had been saying to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Herod wanted to kill John but he was afraid of the people because they considered John a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Her Herodias danced for the guests and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompt by her mother, she said, give me here on a platter, the head of John the Baptist, the king was distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he ordered that her request be granted and had John beheaded in prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. Brothers and sisters, just for uh, a little bit, a little while, I just want to speak to you. Use as a framework for the time that we share together. Don't lose your head. Don't lose your head. Interestingly, brothers and sisters, we live in a time where the truth is no longer the standard, but unfortunately, uh, it has become the exception. The world seems to have drifted into a cycle where, as the Apostle Paul predicted, where people will not tolerate sound doctrine but with itching ears, they will gather around themselves, teachers, to suit their own desires, turning away from the truth to pursue catchy opinions that appeal to their liking. And brothers and sisters, social media many times fails to do what it claims to do, that is, separate news from opinion, uh, it many times fails to do what it should do, and that is report on facts as they are, and they fail to do what society expects them to do, and that is give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Therefore, brothers and sisters, because of the onslaught of misrepresentation and misinformation and miseducation used by opportunists, 
media becomes a vicious cycle and a circle of mutual manipulation, myth-making, and self-interest. And the uncomfortable reality is that some folks seem to be losing their heads and going over the edge because of the misinformation that is shared over social media. Carter G. Woodson once said in his riveting work, The Miseducation of the Negro, he says that if you can control a man's thinking, you don't have to worry about a man's actions. If you all would allow me to just remix that for just a second or letterize it for just a minute and say that if you can control a person's head, you don't have to worry about the actions of his hands. Therefore, pleasant parishioners, don't lose your head in this time of misinformation. Don't lose your head in this time of misrepresentation. Don't lose your head in this time of misinformation, in this time of deceit, in this time of deception, in this time of dishonesty, because brothers and sisters, you need to keep your head so that you can focus on the Lord. Nevertheless, Brothers and sisters, what I share with you is that truth pressed down to the ground shall rise again. In other words, brothers and sisters, you cannot hide the truth because the truth shall emerge again. Let's transition for just a moment. As we look at our text, we see that this is not a new phenomenon. In fact, if we give this particular pericope a prayerful and a profound consideration, it can help strengthen our Christian resolve so that we can better be able to identify the progression of sin and immorality in a world that tends to avoid accuracy, authenticity and integrity. We need to be able, brothers and sisters, to identify that which is fake. Therefore, at this juncture in the gospel narrative, John the Baptist had been in prison for a few months and just a few weeks prior to the writing of this account, John the Baptist was beheaded. So here we are uh, as we are in a flashback that recounts and recalls the unscrupulous actions of rulers. And brothers and sisters, as I parallel that uh, to this time today, if we look across the nation, there has been some unscrupulous actions of those who claim to be leaders. Brothers and sisters, what I share with you, Herod didn't die back then, but there are some Herods that are still alive today. There are some folks that are in leadership positions that are wicked. There are some folks that are in leadership positions that love to lie and dabble in alternative facts. There are some folks that are in leadership positions that backs up wrong and love immorality. But brothers and sisters, I share with you that if we pay attention to this text, if we pay attention to the gospel narrative, we'll be able to know how to respond in a time of uh, injustice. So here we are again in a flashback and it recounts and recalls uh, these unscrupulous actions of a murderer uh, of God's messengers. Herod was a key character in the text who was an unrighteous ruler. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, Herod was part of a lineage of flagrant and brazen folks who did not like or hear the truth. Brothers and sisters, you all know who Herod is. Uh, if we rewind in the text, you know that one Herod, which was this Herod's 
father, uh, Herod the Great, he was the one who wanted to put the baby, who killed infants because he was trying to put our Savior Jesus Christ to death. Then you have this Herod, uh, brothers and sisters, we have Herod Antipatus, brothers and sisters who, bro, who did not want uh, to release John, who killed John on, because John was telling him the truth. And then we have another Herod. Uh, all of these Herods, they bore a bad lineage. And I just wanted to pause parenthetically and share with you, uh, you don't have to be like your daddy. You, you can break generational curses. You don't have to always be like the person who was before you, but you, brothers and sisters, have a choice to do what's right. If I look at the text, if you all would follow me, look at the text, we see in the text, brothers and sisters, the first thing that emerges in the text is that these people were misled by misinformation. These people were misled by misinformation. And I want to caution you in this world of misinformation. Don't be misled by misinformation. Somebody saying, well, Reverend Letcher, where is that in the text? Go with me. If we look in the text, we'll find it in verse 2. It says, at that time, Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus. And he said to his servants, this is John the Baptist who has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, he has powers that are in work in him. It is here where the gospels inform us that people were intentionally being misinformed and misled about who Jesus was. I mean, it was a common misnomer for the people to misconstrue and mistake and misinterpret who Jesus was. If y'all want to follow me, go with me to Matthew 16 and 14 when Jesus asked Peter, who do people say I am? Peter, who knew Jesus in such an intimate way, he began to share with us as ple pleasant parishioners who Jesus was. He said, some folks say that you are uh, brothers and sisters John the Baptist. Other folks say that you are Elijah. And then there are some people who even say that you are Jeremiah or one of the other prophets that has come back from the dead. I just want to pause here parenthetically and say it is important uh, brothers and sisters that you be careful uh, because there are some people still lying to you about who Jesus is. So what I'm sharing with you is brothers and sisters you got to you got to get to the place in your Christian maturity that you know Jesus Christ for yourself. It's important for every believer to be able to know who Jesus is for yourself. Don't ever be misinformed about who Jesus is. I don't know about you today, but I'm glad that I know who Jesus is. I'm glad that I know Jesus Christ personally because if you allow somebody to inform you about who Jesus is, brothers and sisters, every now and then they'll take it as an opportunity to misinform you. You need to know who Jesus is because when you are misinformed about Christ, people will tell you about a Jesus, but they won't tell you about the right Jesus. Ask John MacArthur. John MacArthur, he loved to say that Jesus was a Jesus that never got uh, involved in the political plight. But brothers and sisters, Jesus was a victim of the political plight. Brothers and sisters, you've got to know who Jesus is for yourself because when you are misinformed about who Jesus is, people will tell you about a Jesus, but they'll never give you the right Jesus. 
They'll tell you about a Jesus who said, turn the other cheek, but they'll never want you to discover the Jesus that became righteously indignant even at church because of the boldness of sin and immorality, and he began to turn over tables in protest. I wish I had some witnesses in here. You've got to know who Jesus is for yourself. Because if you don't know who Jesus is for yourself, people will force feed you images of a white-skinned, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus, but never tell you that scripture says that his skin is like bronze and his hair is like lamb's wool. Some folks, brothers and sisters, will say, well, Reverend Lecture, that's not important. Well, it might not be for you, but it is a very important for me. Some folks may even push to say, well, we don't know, uh, we don't know about it, and what you don't know won't hurt you. Well, pleasant parishioners, I beg to differ because what I say that what you don't know will not only hurt you, but what you don't know, it can kill you. That reminds me of an episode on Snapped. I was uh, enjoying my evening one day, brothers and sisters, and I love these crime movies. I was watching Snapped, a real life documentary series, and here comes this series, and it talks about a young lady who uh, wanted to be the wife uh, of a preacher. Her name was Blanche Taylor Moore, and brothers and sisters, the, the preacher had began to get sick and he was rushed to the hospital and he was almost at the brink of death. He didn't die, but brothers and sisters, what happened is, is that once she became close to him again, he got sick again. Y'all walk with me. He didn't know something was going on behind the curtains of his relationship. She was feeding him arsenic in his food. And brothers and sisters, the record is, is that she tried to kill him and had already killed other folks because she was poisoning them, putting something in their food, and they did not know that they were taking in poisoning. Well, somebody may be saying, Reverend Letcher, what does all this have to do with the text? Well, I'll tell you what it has to do with the text. So many people are ending up spiritually dead because they don't know about, they don't know that they are being poisoned with misinformation. That's why it is important to know the truth. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, Jesus tells us that you ought to want to love the truth. You ought to want to walk in the truth. He says in John 8 and 32, know the truth and the truth will set you free. Believers ought not want to dabble in that which is deception. Believers ought not want to deal with alternative facts. We ought not want to deal with alternative facts, but believers ought to desire to know the truth, to tell the truth, to bear the truth, to witness to the truth, to support the truth, to uphold the truth, to walk in the truth, because when you walk in the truth, you walk with Christ and you have fellowship with God. I wish I had one witness in here today. How do I know that somebody might be saying, well, Reverend Letcher, I don't know what you mean. Well, I'm glad Jesus said in John 14 and 6, he says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, for no one comes unto the Father except by me. So brothers and sisters, you've got to understand that in the world that we live in, there are people who are being misled by misinformation. I don't want you to be misled by misinformation. And when people are misled by misinformation, they get to the next point in that they are content with their contempt. They are 
contempt. They are content with their content. Brothers and sisters, you've got to be careful because one thing I know about sin, it's a gradual process. The procession into transgression moves at a slow progression. In other words, the advancement of sin in our lives is a very gradual thing that happens. In other words, brothers and sisters, sin in your life, it does not happen all at once, but sin, the progression of sin is a gradual thing. It moves at a slow pace. It starts out with desire. Then desire moves to where uh, there is deception. In other words, you are uh, making reason for why this is not wrong in your life. It moves from desire to deception and then it moves into a place called disobedience. And after you spend some time in disobedience from God, it moves to a place of death. How am I linking this to the scripture? Let's look at verses 3 and 4. 3 and 4 says, For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on the account of Herodias. Herodias, excuse me, Herodias, Herodias his brother's wife, because John had been telling Herod that it was not lawful for you to have inappropriate relations with your brother's wife. Y'all follow me? Granddaddy would often tell me uh, about sin and sin's gradual uh, progression he would say stuff like this. His granddaddy would say sin, that if you sin and you are ashamed, the devil don't have you. And if you sin and you are ashamed a little bit, the devil just has you a little bit. But if you sin and you are not ashamed at all, the devil has you in a chokehold. Herod had become so bold in his transgressions that he did not care about what God said. That's why Herod was so upset with John the Baptist because he imprisoned him because John the Baptist was telling him about the truth of his errors. And isn't it a shame that we live in a world where leaders despise you and you are likely to be fired from the White House administration because you make the decision to tell the truth. Brothers and sisters, because the truth is no longer the standard but the exception, truth comes at a high price, especially in America. When you tell the truth, Folks don't like you. If we could just recall on April the 4th, 1968, uh, the truth cost Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. his life. The truth comes at a high cost. If we could fast forward to this particular century, you all know that the truth is expensive because the truth costs Colin Kaepernick a multi-million dollar salary. I mean, it costs you more to tell the truth than it does to tell a lie. But that's okay because the return on your investment is higher than you can imagine. Because the word of God says that the wages of sin is death. <laughs> but look at your investment when you tell the truth, when you decide to live in the truth. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life. Brothers and sisters, as we look at the progression of sin, we see, uh, first of all, 
uh, that uh, we can be misled by misinformation, but you don't have to stay there. It's one thing, brothers and sisters, to be headed in the wrong direction and you don't know, but it's another thing uh, entirely to be headed in the wrong direction and you know you're going the wrong way. So therefore, you, you, you're misled by misinformation, then that leads to being content in your contempt. And then if you get, if you move past being content in your contempt, brothers and sisters, what you'll start to do is dance with the devil. Look at the text. It says that Herod began to dance with the devil. Brothers and sisters, he not only began to dance with the devil, but he eventually started doing diabolical deals in the darkness. Look at the text. It's not just Reverend Letcher saying this, but he began to dance with the devil. Verse 6 says, on Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias uh, danced for the guests and pleased Herod so much. I mean, brothers and sisters, I'm trying to keep this thing PG-13, but you all know what was going on if you look between uh, the, uh, if you look between, if you read between the lines in the text, you all know what this girl was doing. She was dropping it like it was hot for the 992. She was throwing it in a circle. I mean, she won the city girl twerk challenge because, brothers and sisters, she was twerking in such a degree that she caused Herod to make a diabolical deal. And I want to pause parenthetically as I rush with rapidity to my conclusion and share with you, don't ever lose your head over what you see at the bottom. Come on, man, don't lose your head over what you see at the bottom. And I want you to do this, brothers and sisters, don't ever uh, uh, miss what is divine because you're focused on your own desires. Brothers and sisters, keep your head up and not only keep your head up, but keep your eyes on God. As a matter of fact, I love what scripture says. We, we've got to get to the place in our Christian maturity where we continue to focus our heads and our eyes and our attention on God. Because when we focus our attention on God, we have nothing uh, but virtuous things to share. You all remember what Paul told the Philippian church, don't you? He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever Whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Don't do diabolical deals in the dark while dancing with the devil. Because if you don't do that, you won't do another thing that he did in the text. You won't placate for publicity. For publicity. If you look at the text, brothers and sisters, the text tells us that uh, he wanted to kill John. Uh, he wanted to kill John before there was even a deal that was done in the darkness. He wanted to kill John, but he knew that it would upset the people. How am I connected this to our lives today, brothers and sisters, uh, these type of people, they speak one way out of their mouth and act another way with their heart and their hands. Ultimately, brothers and sisters, they are hurt you with the actions of their hand. I mean, I'm glad that we are renaming streets Black Lives Matter. It, it's nice. Uh, to see businesses uh, that are releasing statements in support of the BLM movement, but the true celebration comes when there is real structural and institutional changes. 
Don't pacify me with saluting the life and the legacy of John Lewis while actively dismantling the policies that he has put in place to help disenfranchised people. Brothers and sisters, the door of the church is open. I pray that something has been said that will help you to identify the progression of sin. Understand that we live in a world that is misled by misinformation, but you don't have to stay there. But if you decide to stay in a place where you're misled by misinformation, you'll find yourself being content with your contempt. And when you are content with your contempt, brothers and sisters, you'll find yourself dancing with the devil and doing diabolical deals in the darkness. Brothers and sisters, again, the door of the church is open. If you would like to be a part of Pleasant Green, you can email us at ghpruitt at gmail.com. And if you email ghpruitt at gmail.com, brothers and sisters, someone will respond to you within 48 hours. You need a church home. You need a church home in this time of misinformation, in this time where folks are misleading folks right to hell. You need a church home, brothers and sisters. You need a church home. Also, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage everyone to continue in giving. You have been faithful. You have been faithful. And I want to encourage you to keep doing what God said. You can't be God giving no matter how you try. Uh, we appreciate you in your giving, but also brothers and sisters, if you want an opportunity for generosity, there are two ways that you can share in giving to our church. You can send a check or a money order uh, to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, uh, and that is at REV Rev G.H. Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. You can send a check or a money order. Or, brothers and sisters, you can give online. You can give online. You can give online at www.pgmbcstl.org. Pgmbcstl.org. And you can uh, click on the giving tab uh, and you can give electronically. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful for you. And don't forget, brothers and sisters, this is also a time where we want to celebrate all of our graduates and we want to celebrate those who are going to school. So therefore, brothers and sisters, we will be sharing with you information on how you can give to our Samaritans. Our Samaritans are trying to uplift uh, those who are part of higher education and higher learning. Brothers and sisters, just to follow up on that with you, if you know someone who is a graduate and is going to a school of higher learning, we also want you to contact the church uh, by email. Uh, you can send an email to ghpruitt at gmail.com. If you know a graduate, you can send an email or you can contact the church office at the number that is listed below. May God bless you.